Hello, everyone, and welcome to the bitter, 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 bloody end of this second edition playtest. We put it down. We are forced to, unfortunately. Schedules conflict. We're trying to put out several shows at once. Who thought of that? Who thought of going network instead of just riding on one podcast and trying to get the glory and the money and the cat? Well, we did. We did. We paid for the network. We put up several shows. We hope you enjoy at least one. And we do hope you appreciate the effort and time we're putting in. Now, if you really do appreciate the effort and time putting in, Dice Wise Entertainment is now supporting Rollmongers Network and has a Patreon page where, well, all the debt that we have incurred is now going into company debt that it's incurring. And you can help with that. And we have merchandise on Teespring at forward slash rollmongers.com. We have a Patreon at Patreon of rollmongers.com. There are many ways you can provide support as well as listen and especially tell your friends about us tell them how the audio was really weird the first five episodes of this attack of opportunity tell them about how bad my tangents were in the early star wars and my quality wasn't great and how a year in we decided to break the mold and go with an all cavalier party for war for the crown and one fly samurai and spent an entire 22 episode bit on a prologue just to see if the characters would work and now we're into season one of War for the Crown called Dice Before Dishonor. There will be a little bit of extra, of course. We are soon, 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 so close to shooting the pilot for my dream, the man from Assyrian, which will run Pathfinder Society Adventures, very specific ones that tie many of our pods together and eventually dip some toes in the old mummy's mask in 4715, but it begins in 4707. It's a long way to go. Much, much, much entertainment coming your way. And dare, I say. Die, yes, I dare. And Halloween. This wretched Halloween. About a week or two in. When you're thinking of zombies, ghouls, and fighting the good fight as a slayer. We will be owning our evil in the Pathfinder Society adventure path. Hell's vengeance. Hell's yeah! They're going to be evil. I don't even know how I'm going to handle them. It's so easy when you're evil. That's true. Maybe we'll make it a musical. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Now, gentlemen, round 14. Round 14. What does that tell you about the system? What does that tell you about our tactics? What does that tell you about my jamming style? We'll skip that last part. Terrible. <laughs> On all three <laughs> oh. aspects. Oh, see how quick he is? See see how quick Aiden just chimes in? Well, guess what, Aiden? It's your go. Kane, the sorcerer. What have you got? Finish her! What have you got, man? Make it good. Uh, Hurry up. All right. Well, okay. Give me a sec. <laughs> uh, question. Is charge, like charging somebody or something, just something we can do naturally? Or is that has that been kind of sectioned off into certain classes? As I just mentioned, my plate is full. I turn my eyes and my attention to my co-GM in this project, Jared the Intern. Jared? Charge is a... You can definitely charge. Anybody can charge, but it's like a full round action. I, I can... Do you have the book open by chance? I have the book open, but I'd have to find it directly. Uh, I, I was looking for it, but I wasn't finding it, so... Isn't it a fighter thing? Oh, that's uh, grappling. I, I saw sudden charge under barbarian, but I wasn't sure. Um, anywho, is there somebody that can get this elemental out of my way during this upcoming round before Nagasi gets to go? Either via bull rush, grappling, or just killing it. Okay, if that's the case. I'm going to hold my turn. <laughs> you forgot to say Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> Eh, Bueller. Eh. Bueller. All right. You are holding or delaying. So that means you can, in between when we're calling out, you can jump in. I still believe that's a thing. So Kane is holding. Abdima, you are up, sir. Maricel, get ready. You're on deck. Well, then I'm going to drain my arcane focus to regain a third level spell. Specifically, third level um, magic missile. And since that is a like a reaction, I guess, I'll then make my I'll then spend my three actions this turn casting it. 
which means she gets hit with six magic missiles. Oh my. Nice. Pew, 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 pew. Oh my. That's a magic machine gun. No, I'm assuming magic missiles are like yield magic missiles and they just automatically strike, or are you actually rolling? Yes, they act they automatically strike. As long as she's within 120 feet of me. Which I think she is. I'll pull out your arrow. Pull out your measuring Ooh. tool. Excuse me while he whips this out. Sixty feet. Uh, Sixty feet. Yeah. Okay, we're all good then. Um Yeah, so it is Roll six D four plus six. Because each one gets plus one. Nice. 24 points of damage. Smash. 24. All right. I see what you're saying. I see what you're trying to say. You're, try you're trying to make a point. Very good point. Yeah, no kidding. Um, right, so taking off 24 points, there's ouching, there's anger, there's eyes, there's promises, silent promises coming your like way. I made that point twice, actually. Yeah, but I'm still here. I'm still standing. Na -na 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 -boo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what's well, a good song? It is. It is. Any other <laughs> actions there, Abdiya? Uh, no, that was three. Uh, that was three and a reaction. I'm done for now. Okay, Marisil, you are up. Arles, you're on deck. And I did find charge. If you're interested, if you move at least ten feet on the action before you attack. Add a circumstance bonus to damage for that attack equal to the number of damage dice of the weapon. The only with for weapons that have the charge like type. Yes. Okay. Otherwise, it's the barbarian ability. Got it. Okay. So, and on my turn. Mm -hmm. Yes. I will run. <laughs> run away! <laughs> there, I was waiting for Joe to say that. <laughs> this is a classic line. Classic Joe. Yeah. Well, you have to go through the door, so you, we know you can't climb the walls. <laughs> yeah, something about wit and walls. I will chase her down. Roar! All right. And uh, that's my... Oh, wait, babe. Can I use three of my all three of my actions for movement? Second you may. Yep. I, I can get it right up beside her. <laughs> Joe Gibson, everyone, one of the other few that actually bothered to read second edition rules. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Joe, right. we're gonna play. Want to play with us? Sure. Here's a book. Memorize so it so we don't have to. My entire turn to get up right beside her. Oh, okay. Ha ha! How about you? And that's all I can do. All right. Now we've got Arles. Um, now refresh my memory: is uh, moving diagonal thing, or are we all moving like uh, night pieces? Diagonally is a thing, so it's two or five, okay. fifteen. Not the first one. Like your first fifteen, your first diagonal is just regular, but beyond that, it starts doubling up every other kind of thing. So it counts for two. So it's like moving, just uh, left and right. Yeah. Well, the first grid, one's... the grid on roll twenty is actually geared to, to do actually do that. So if you, uh, are we spamming or which which one does the tracing step? You. Yeah. You what? Grab your mini. Yeah. Start start hovering over squares and tap Q as you go your path, and it'll do it for you. Okay. Also, with your ruler there, you can see it. It does. It jumps five feet right. and whatever. Okay. Air, if you're yeah. on deck, you'll kind of hold the left click, drag, and then hit Q for every square you want to pass through. Oh, nice! I like it. All right, I make a. Uh... I just use all my actions for moves. 
and I make a beeline towards Nagasi for my uh, entire turn. Okay. Uh, triple move? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Arif, you're up, and the water elemental goes next. All right, so I am going to slash at the water elemental. Uh, 16 to hit. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, no, 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 18, 18, sorry, 18. 18, okay, uh, yeah, perfect. So. And then I'm going to move. Okay. I'm trying to lure it out of the way. Okay. Now, do creatures get attacks of opportunity? Like, I know fighters need the feats. Do creatures just automatically, like, is there like a monster thing where they get to do it? Only if it's in their description. Only if it's, yeah, so it needs to be an ability, I suppose. I don't believe I'm just having a quick double peek here. Uh, so, I, no. so I slash at it, and I, I know it was kind of trained on me. Yeah. So I'm trying to pull it away. Yeah, yeah. Doing the, the shift and deke. Yep. Um, now, did you go through the bush there? No, I went around. Oh, okay. Yeah. I went through a friendly square. Yep. And then, re- I see. Sorry, I saw you now. I, I got you mixed up with Kane there, so. Okay, okay. Yeah, I see it. So you, you go down and around, and yep. it's like, here, boy. Okay, I got gotcha. you. All right. And that's and it for you? I'm done. Okay. It's time for Squishy Paste. This thing's aggravated. Uh, self-aware, and it doesn't really have eyes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't hurt it and run off. You just kind of waved, and you're trying to draw. Um, now, these things do have a, a basic script but they're it's i'm gonna say they're territorial so i'm gonna piss in its fountain here in a second yeah (laughs) i'm gonna say (laughs) normally i'd go for the closest guy but i will give you at least a 50 50 since you like run over to its home you know that kind of thing instead of just like an automatic draw fair enough turn it around the waist while uh whip this up oh it takes the bait (laughs) <laughs> the lure always gets them. Yeah, takes the bait. So, excuse me while I drift over here and start beating on you. Now, try not to die. I mean, we are about to launch an entire show based on your character there, Frank. So, it is, if you die here, it is the future. Second edition is the future. It's We're going to just be reading your memoirs. Yeah, I, I don't think <laughs> you appreciate just how tough and springy this old man is. Uh, <laughs> Come at me, whippersnapper. <laughs> Good. All right. Got that with a four, plus even with my nine. Uh, it's, it's like mm, 13 <laughs> to hit you. No. I don't think so. Um, yeah. And I, I kind of like whoosh my way over to you. So, some whooshing, and then the big uh, pseudopod water slam, and miss. But you get wet. It does happen. Oh, Oh. Squee, almighty Squee. Ah, yes, uh, the terrain in front of me. What exactly is this? Bush? Yep. Yeah? Yep. Easy to go through? Sure. Uh, no. Okay. No, not only not only does it look uh, difficult, they look uh, well. Do you want to uh, blow a move to perceive? No, I just want to. I'm fine. I'll go this way. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to be the child in the bush, ha! You must take a moment for information to be garnered upon you. Ah, uh, it's all right. Hold on, I'm getting confused here. I can't see where I am. Okay. <laughs> Getting some right. echo chamber off a of squee there. Is he like talking into his little bane cup? You hear that? <laughs> you guys, you guys getting that? I have moved. That's it. All right. Yep. He's following I up on Arles. Take my turn. Oh, here we go. Okay. So shuffle you in there. Okay. There's your new. Uh, there's your new turn order. I'm gonna put you at the four point five mark for what that's worth. Okay. So squee goes after Arles the paladin, and then Kane does what? Uh, so as soon as the water elemental gets out of the way and Kane sees Squee kind of shuffle off as he does, uh, he's going to burst forward just within range of Nagasi 
and he is going to cast Web. I was going to say, if you fireball a <laughs> iconic rogue character, that's a crime against Paizo. That's a crime against gaming. <laughs> Don't hey, waste their iconics, man. Extra third level spell slot. I won't. Like, no, I won't nope. hesitate to no. fireball a bitch. What so tell, does Web do? Yeah, maybe? tell us about the new Web. All right, so uh, create a sticky web in the area that impedes creatures' movement each time they try and move through it. Uh, squares filled with web are difficult terrain. Each square can be cleared um, with a, an attack or effect that at least deals five slashing or one fire damage. Um, each time a creature begins to use a move action while in the web, it must attempt an athletics check or reflex save against my spell DC to avoid being entangled or immobilized. Um, so it is a 30 feet, 30 foot range, um, 15 foot burst. When somebody is immobilized, are they considered flat footed? Now, do those, does web have to be anchored to anything? Oh, that's a good point. Used to be. Used to be. We can't make assumptions, but we do have to draw on the logic of the multiverse, the spidey verse. Well, there's the bush there, and then there's the wall over there. The wall behind him. Yeah, 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 the, the wall is only 10 feet away. I, I'll give you the wall. Because it's only 10 feet away. You said it was a 20-foot burst, right? And then there's an iconic... 15-foot uh, uh, burst from uh, the center origin on my ping. Right. And what's so, the range you have on this spell? 30 feet. So 30 feet to here, yeah. um, which is 10 feet north of Nagasi, and then 15, 15, 15... Right, 5, With 10, all. 15. Okay, it doesn't make it to the wall. You need one more square. Do you have any more movement? No, I don't. Not if I want to cast. Because it has to sort of, you know, like, touch the wall. Does it have to? Well, it should, it should encompass... More? Well, it doesn't say anywhere on the spell description that it has to be connected to objects. Could be thinking the old Pathfinder rules. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think, Jared? Well, I always think of it as just like a giant with web. web I would always say that uh, if it wants to target a square itself, then that would work. Like the ground, the square in the ground. I'll allow it. What were you saying, Jay? Not Jared, but Jay, the other Jay. Sorry, I was trying to talk before you called on Jared. I was saying it's like it you could very easily just attach it to the ground like a giant spider web because that's I mean it is just a web, right? Oh, you mean make it flat like a tangle spell. Yeah. Yeah, like a, like mm. a funnel spider or whatnot. Well, like our, spiders in Australia. Back in my day, you had to have an L anchor and <laughs> fucking do the wall, you know, and, you know, attaches it to like Maricel as the L. <laughs> Thanks, Kane. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, like I said, Jared has no objection. Um, Jay's giving offers. Joe, you read this book. Yep. Yep. Do I know that spell? No, I don't. <laughs> well, like I said, we'll allow it. The council voted. I'm, I'm looking at the spell right now, and Aiden's right. It doesn't say anything about opposing anchor points. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're good. We're good. Yeah, that's sorry, awesome. I it, that's what I thought. Which is a lot better. Made it better. Oh, now we like second ed because we're winning. Oh, <laughs> we're losing <laughs> horribly bad. <laughs> yes. Nagasi, what have you got know. for us? We're playing this game. Are we really winning, Jeff? Are we really winning? Uh, I would like to take a very quick moment oh. to point out the... Remember I talked about don't blame the DM. You know, the, the bad guys are scripted. You get a DM that, like, counters his players because he's familiar with the characters. But I really like the flavor of... Um, adventure that's written sure you can add to it and you should embellish on things not necessarily change things the murderer played out her part she you chose her or the other guy she's in this garden for a reason there are hazards there are water elementals and she has a certain spell list and a certain way that she decides to take on any foes coming her way based on her own abilities and in second edition i found it very interesting um about sort of like a tier thing, like f first phase, it'll she'll do this. And then when she starts getting knocked down at points, there's a second phase going, oh crap, well, I guess I better do this, this, and this. And now as she's really lowering on hit points, kind of like the fourth edition bloodied, there's a third phase, almost like a desperate or the bloodied phase. Am I getting this right, Jared? That's what it looks like. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, and so what do you do in your third phase? She's going to shock and grasp 
the person in front of her. Uh, are you wearing metal armor, sir? Uh, no, I am not. Okay, so I don't get to do extra damage. Oh, No, <laughs> you do not. <laughs> so it will be a, of course, roll die to hit, which now I've got to... There. 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 There's a real web for you. You guys are like drawing there, white yeah, lines yeah. all over my... <laughs> it's like, we want to see the web, damn it. Well, I figured it'd be useful. No, no, it's very cool. It actually gave me the ideas like, oh yeah, I guess I better, uh, you know. Um, but there you go. Can you guys see this? Mm-hmm. Go, go, web. Go, go, spidey web. The 26 hit your touch. Yes, yes it does. I take it Nagasi made her save and is not immobile? She's not no. moving. Yeah, she's not moving, so nothing happens. Well, I mean, she's casting a spell, though. Does it not have so somatic? It does, but it's specific. Isn't the web spell specific to moving in and out of the square? Uh, if, it, if you couldn't, if you couldn't move, you couldn't free yourself, right? The web spell does allow strength checks, burning, chopping your way out, hence movement within. You know what I mean? So you could cast a spell. Yeah, I mean it. It says each time a creature begins to use a move action while in the web, I mean you. With a somatic component, it's, it technically is a move action, but I, I don't know. That that's getting a little nitpicky and kind of BS for me. So I think I, it, I think I, it would be fine. In the, in the description, does it talk about escaping the web? Uh, yes. And what does it say you can do? Um, or each square uh, can be cleared of the web by a single attack or effect right. that deals at least five damage. Right, so um, if you're free enough to, like, wiggle weapons and everything, you're good. Yeah. However, a concentration check? Are those still valid in this game? Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Concentration checks are now just basically you use one of your actions. Yeah, your oomph. Right. So I can't I can't even pin him down with that. Sorry. He has too many chevrons. Moving on. So what do you got for it, Nagasi? Eight lightning damage with one ongoing persistence. Oh, the pain, the agony. I can take yes. it. <laughs> Sorry, would you say uh, one ongoing? You mean a single point of ongoing or like another yep. roll? No, no, just single point of ongoing. Uh, oh, okay, like okay. okay. Electricity damage. Okay. No, wait, I just so, want to get back to that. I felt like immersed for a second there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, is there a save? It's a touch attack. attack the, so no. Touch attack? Okay. Okay. And you did hit, right? Yep. Round. 15. I'd like to call this the final round. I mean, wouldn't you like to call this the final round? I mean, we, we are 17 episodes. This is episode 18, which is supposed to be played in a single four to six hour session. Could we call it the lightning round? Well, considering the last <laughs> Pathfinder Society adventure, I ran, ran 22 sessions and I actually split the party and added six characters, but it still didn't help with the time frame. I guess I shouldn't complain. Round 15, Abdima, you're up. Maricel, you are on deck. Okay, I believe when we last we left off, I was on a horse. Uh, yeah, you had summoned a mount, right? I did indeed. How long okay. does that last? Uh, that lasts like eight hours or so. Okay. Did we attack the horse or blow it up or fireball it? Because it's missing. I think we just took it off the board, but I don't remember it being but, attacked. But why? <laughs> why did Horsey have to leave? Does anyone? Because know? it was screwing up, uh, moving him around. I think oh, it's oh yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the aesthetic of it was... Logistics. I remember. Okay, yes, you have a horse, even though it's a visible magical horse that no one can see but you. <laughs> I mean, that kind of makes He just sense. floats bow-legged around. You guys just think what you want. No, no, you just have to think like a spice commercial. Um, and how far does a horse move, just to be quickly checked? <laughs> I believe it's... They have 40-foot movement, right? Yes. Sure. Look, Abdima's on a horse. Smells like aftershave. Yay, two movements. 
There he goes. There he goes. Okay. okay. Yep. And with that, I don't have enough room to cast a spell at her, but I'm just going to attack. So, swinging my bastard sword. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Damn it. Oh, the sword of uh, ultimate deathness. Only a 16 this time. Oh, it's all right. I'm pretty sure as a boss killer, as a, you know, as a party killer, my armor class is like crazy high. So no, I'm going to say no. What else you got? Anything? That's Let's my go. third action. Okay. Next up, we have Maricel of the webs and of the electricity. You yeah, shock, yeah. Shocking personality. Oh. Errols, you're on deck. She's going to attack with her um, rapier and her dagger as soon as I can find my... There it is. Plus 10. Blanking if it helps. Nine. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Blanking does help, doesn't it? That's a thing. Okay, is that a bonus to the attack roll? Yes, or is it a bonus to damage or flanking? Uh, I believe it's the bonus. I don't think it flat foots anymore, though, does it? No. No, no. Yeah, so I just used the, like, the plus two to hit. Yeah. Okay. So first attack with the rapier. 30. Oh. I believe that's good. Hold on. Wait a second. Is there a crit range on this bad boy? No, I don't think there is. That's not a thing in second ed, is it? Yeah, no. there it is, depending on the weapon. You gotta get five or ten above the hit. Right, right. All that noise. Two hit. Okay, well, then how much higher than our AC did I manage to squeeze in there? <laughs> well, if you really want to know. <laughs> scroll, it's a scroll. 30 a critical hit. Scroll, 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 madly scroll, scroll. Pretty solid dynamite uh, slash, really. Huh, that's nine over. Nine over. Oh, so good. So so when you're flanked, it opposes a minus two circumstance penalty to armor class and touch armor class. That's yeah. That's why I'm. It's nine over. Yeah. Hiya. So no, no good for you. What are you, Captain Falcon? What do you got to hit? What do you got to hit for a crit? Plus ten. Yeah, ten like, over. At least ten yeah. or more over. That's sassy. Okay. So close, but yet so far. Um. All right. So what is my damage? Two D six plus four. So let's add four to this. Hey, 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 Matt. Yes. You want to burn Baldwin's uh, party point? Get the crit? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, shout out to Doug Baldwin. <laughs> yeah, I do. Thanks, Doug. Doug, Doug Baldwin, because 20 gold pieces is 20 gold pieces, and the entire this party get, get wait, wait, insight from up. the gods. The, does that point carry over from game to game, or is it specifically for this game? Uh, oh, I'm just messing with him. <laughs> he, said he, he wants to influence the Star Wars party. I was just having a go. I wanted him to roll, and then it was going to remind him. Oh Here's no! Sorry. Point. Here's your force point. Here's your force point. Sorry, I got excited. That's can true. he spend a hero point to make it a crit? The hero yeah. points. Oh, yeah, we have our hero points. Have you guys banged all, out all your hero points? Because I know I've got one. I have yeah, one hero listed. points. Yeah, I remember you get up to three, bring chips, you get two, blah, blah. You know that? You have hero points in second edition. Aren't they pretty much just to keep you alive? In second edition, there is there is one that you should be able to get a small bonus. Take or a reroll. There's like, you got to burn like two for the. Yeah, they're very handy to hold on to. So you get like revives and stuff, you know? And um, Oh, man. I have a hero point. Yeah. Burning a hole in my pocket. I yeah. also have another attack incoming. So, anyways. Um, well, so... it's got to be at least a plus one. I'll give it to you. Burn your hero point. You got the 30 because you only need the plus one. Let's have your crit and whole bit. Sweet. Smashy, smashy. Roar. Um, I will. Uh, so, that'll be uh, seven and four is 11 times two is 22 damage with my first attack. Okay. And my second attack. Oops, that's the wrong direction will be plus nine. Hatcha! Twenty-one to hit, and then whatever the minus two or AC. I'm sorry. Is. What was what's the damage on the? Uh, Twenty-two damage with my first hit. Okay. Right. And what'd you get on the second hit? 
Second was a 21. I think that's a miss. It is a miss. Yeah. Okay. No, sorry. That is a direct hit. Um, Oh, because the flanking. Right, right. Sorry. I don't have haste anymore. Oh, Ah. that's right. That's right. Smacky, smacky. Flank you. Four. 1d4 <laughs> plus 4. You stick her in and she just keeps a straight <sighs> face. You're not even sure it went in. Six damage for my second pokey pokey. Okay. And with my last action, I'll spit in her face. Oh, that's just rude. Yes, it is. I Ugh. ain't no lady. <laughs> so, if you're finished, you're yes. quite done. Here comes Arles, followed by Arif. Arles. Uh-huh. I charge into battle. Right. Can you move through this web? I can get closer, can't I? Well, the web has 15 foot, so it actually covers in and around Maricel. In and around. Could I get a definite? Like, where is this web start and end on my side for as far as I'm concerned? Um, basically, it covers this entire area that I'm highlighting. But yeah. the wall blocks it? I don't know. Yeah, it goes up to the wall. Like, like to there's the wall. It goes. Well, no, he's talking about the hedge. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Does the hedge block it? Because it's. A hedge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll give you a 15 foot radius uh, thingy here to look Let at. Let me see with my eyeballs. Where's the sticky stuff stop? <laughs> Ew, this reminds me of Mardi Gras. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> We're just buying you time to draw a circle, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, had we had gone with Aiden's little wiggly lines. Well, they're back now, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, but they are white. <laughs> oh, Jesus white Christ. Get that checked out. Hmm. Actually, that's not white. That's more like an earthy brown, but, you know. <laughs> I'd, I'd call that flesh-colored. Flesh-colored, <laughs> Which yeah. I think is even more terrifying, flesh-colored Eat web. my flesh web. So oh, here it what? is, Arles. Make your move. Okay. Uh, so I do not have a clean line of sight, you would say? Nope. Okay. I will move. Yes. To Yer, and I will throw my sword. Ha-ha! Because I can do this. Okay. I put points and things into the So thing. you come south, skirt around. You're still behind Maricel, but we can still kind of touch point edge of your square to Nagasi, and you kind of like come around on the low side, on the south side, and toss and result. Looking for the button. Found the button. Hadaka! And then my second throw. A double Hadaka! Wait, 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 second throw. Second throw. I got two chevrons. Returning. I got three chevrons. Return. Yeah! Oh, well, that would, that would, does it return within? Yes, it does. In the same round or at the end of the round? Throw it and it magically materializes in his hand. Yep. Returning's awesome in second ed. Yeah. It makes it cool. Rotation, basically. Yeah. It's the yo-yo of doom. Okay. So, uh, 19 on my first throw. No. Wait, do I get flanking because Abdima is on the other side there? Uh, yeah, because she, because she, her defenses are down, yeah. So, 19, 19, I get it. 19 still sucks. No, sorry. <clears throat> no, so, it's the 21 still sucks? Uh, Jarrett, the 21 should hit, I believe. Hit last time. Yeah, 20, yeah, 23 or 21. Yeah, that'll hit. Yep. All right. So, then that's uh, 15 dams. Okay. And then uh, 25. 25 to what? Hit. Yes. Is 9 dams. Okay, so a total of 24 damage a la sword. Yeah, flying sword. Flying sword of material yeah, doom. Throw it away, and then it comes back. Okay. Spit on her two, Ryan. Name. Spit on her two. <laughs> yeah, and I use my move action to go, Hawk two, Marisa, look out. Hawk two. <laughs> you guys literally see blood stains soaking into her clothes from all of this scorch damage and nastiness. I have rights, you know. <laughs> Just whatever happened to arresting me. Um... Arif, meanwhile, back up. Meanwhile, the, yeah, back up in the corner. Well, you got what you wanted. It's everyone's ignored you and ran off for you to deal with this thing by yourself. <laughs> what do you yep. do now? 
So I'm moving away. So there's one move kind of around the uh, the bush there. And then second move to put me right there. Okay. And then I will cast a spell. He's creeping up on that web. Wait, I, two, wait uh, two moves is two chevrons. Most spells are usually oh, two Oh, the, you're right, you're right, you're right. So. I can't cast my two chevron spell. I thought it was a one. Move again. Okay. Can you cast it at range? Uh, yeah, but I'm too far away. That's kind of uh, why I was moving. Okay. So do you want to Let's just, see. Yeah. Let me go back, see if I can be a little more conservative on movement. I thought I had some room to play with. Sure. Uh, that's as far as I can get. He, go, he goes back and gets out the walker and the stroller. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 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 no. <clears throat> 35 feet. And what's your So range? close. Okay. So close. It's all good. Um, I got this. So uh, did you want to get down there so we can envelop you in Kane's next spell? I mean, that'd be nice. Would, wouldn't that be nice? No, I'm no, I'm good right there. <laughs> okay. So he comes down from the north pond, and he's kind of hovering off the top right of this web, a couple of 10 feet away, directly above the web at 15, 20 feet, because it's the edge, not the center of the web, is Kane, whose turn is coming up soon, but not yet. So Arif's done. It's yep. time for Water Elemental action. Mr. Water Elemental hasn't forgot about you. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to get to you. Oh, so many powers. Do I have? So well, many. before I was burning so many, so much movement. I'd really like to do something oh, cool. Jeff, yeah? The thing only has one move action. Yeah, I see that. Uh, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm looking, it's like water. burning everything. It's just like, <sighs> and so I, I can either move or attack. Yeah. And la well, good thing. It's a good thing I missed last time. We'll just forget about that. Okay, so it just Wah. comes plodding after you. You can't catch an old man, can you? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. All right, uh, Squee of the mighty Topic, Kane, you're on deck. What do you got for me, Squee? I'm moving. All right, and attack. Uh, you just like teleported through a whole bunch of web. Do you have that kind of down and around? I'm assuming you just uh, did the big L. I just did the big L. Okay. All the way around. All right. No, <laughs> the big fine. L to get the big W. Just, yeah, it's just like it's do the old, uh, you know, Q, 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 yeah. as opposed to pew, pew, pew. But yeah, you see yeah. what we're going on here. Okay. Well, something like that. Yeah. I'll, I'll trust you. <laughs> it's too close to bedtime. <laughs> he actually read the book, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just trust him. Okay. All right. A 21. That just barely hits. Yeah. With a neon green animated dice. Look at us go. From a guy named Joe. Four Don't make him six. Just Don't. say it. <laughs> six points? Yeah. Okay. Six. Getting down there. She's really, really like, oh, God, my open sandal feet. Why? Why did I wear sandals? Uh, anything else, sir? Uh, is it? Okay. Jam that toe. Good hit, Chamberlain. <laughs> Kane. All right. From where I'm at, yes. Hand makes the you know the 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 gun with the fingers point at her, and I'm going to cast Grim Tendrils. Heightened. Grim. Heightened Grim Tendrils. Yes, heightened to level two. That, um, that sounds new. Yeah, uh, black shadows cut, uh, curl out from your fingertips and race through the air, taking the form of uh, ephemeral vines spiked with thorns. Uh, oh my god, deal, he's, a, he's a flirt. Deal negative damage and persistent bleed damage to living creatures in the line. He's a flirt. Anime once. And it's exactly 40 feet. Have you guys anyway. seen Captain Marvel, the cat, the flirg? Yeah. yeah. Nope, yeah. not yet. Oh, sorry. Not yet. Yeah, no, no spoilers. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yep. You'll find this moment in time. All right. So damage, restraining. Sorry, what was the what was the cold zone at the uh, end? Uh, so five d four negative damage, Oof. and uh, so thirteen negative damage. She has to make a fortitude save against uh, my DC of nineteen. Okay. Or what? Get half. Uh, yeah. Success half. Critical success unaffected. Failure. I'm gonna full. go with half since I just rolled a natural nineteen plus her fort. So, <laughs> what's your DC? Fourteen. Nineteen. Yeah. So I'm good. I only take half. 
So rounded down is six? Yes. Okay. And no persistent bleed. Okay. And you're done? Uh, I'll move up to the edge of the webs. Okay. <laughs> Flying black tendrils. Remember the sorcerer? We picked him up on the side of the road. He's, he's fine. He's fine, okay. Dude points finger gun, black tendrils come shooting up, grabbing her around the upper eye, like she's blind, her throat, and one right inside her mouth, and just pulls. And it's not that it pulls guts, it just seems to pull essence out of her. And when he, you know, lets it go, she just seems huskated and thin and collapses in a heap at your feet, gentlemen. Yay! Yay! Finally! Round 60! <laughs> oh, we're not done. Now you, now it's Battle Royale. Let's, let's keep going. You never liked each other. There can no. only be one. <laughs> there can only be one. Arles just starts throwing his sword around. His Come helmet's, me, bro! His helmet's down over his face. He never saw there, anybody. Have, now I will unleash my true form. Yeah, exactly. Round 16, top of the round, okay? As if on, you know, patriotic cue, six Quantium Guards spill into the garden from the south, followed by a tentative Venture Captain Sebnit. They, you know, circle everyone, draw swords, tell you guys to, like, you know, throw down, we got this kind of thing, everybody complies, yes? You have amazing timing. <laughs> You guys are all like, we got her, you know. Um, so yeah, they, you know, they, they surround, they secure, you know. Sebnet assures them, no, 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 him, yeah, no, I know him, I know him, I know him. I, I, do I know you? Ah, well, you all did such a good job. I'm sure you're all together. Eh, it's okay. Anyway, and she comes over to Arles and Maricel who are side by side and part of the end squee who are all bunched up part of the original three that started this investigation. She's looking at everyone, but she approaches those three directly and stops at your feet and congratulates you enthusiastically. I commend you for your outstanding performance in tracking down the perpetrator. And then she looks down and sees the husk and just kind of like takes a step back. Like, yeah, <laughs> um, so, now, we're assuming the woman has the book they're looking for. She actually asks you guys, what do you think we should do with the collected collected derivatives? Sell it. There still rubs her hands. <laughs> Go to the people. Go to the people. The, the people had a crack at it. It spurred a lot of violence. Anyone? No, well, like, that to it, that it, tome would be best if I were to interpret it. So, hand it over. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sell anything unless you know its proper value. It it is written in in Kellish, and it looks like a weird grocery list. Um, and if they briefed him on that, actually, no, it was you and Abdima that were like looking over the fake copy, right? Yep. And this looks it was a decent copy because this looks you know like legit. Anyway. Um, are we to assume that somebody uh, roots the body and produces this and uh, you know because right, it's it's a free form you guys are making suggestion Aaron Arif wanders over and says you know let me have a look Demon's now nodding. the lawbreaker has been brought to justice <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone, st <laughs> everyone stands around laughing like the end of Thundercats <laughs> <laughs> lips moving si slightly out of sync like the best Japanese <laughs> 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 I, I, I see you have fallen the enemy. Uh, and a minute past that, we're like, why are we still all here? <laughs> <laughs> Can we join the party? I hear, I hear free food. <laughs> she does seem so to find your suggestions. She does do find your suggestions reasonable. Okay. Um, thank you again so much for your efforts. And I promise to send a glowing report on your performances and your aid turning to our specialists that we brought in, Abdima and Arif as like, you know, side that got swept up in the actual adventure when you guys were just supposed to be consultants, you know, um, to the Grand Lodge in Absalon itself. I encourage you, please stay in touch with the society, turning to Abdima and Arif. And uh, if you please, if we can call upon you again in the future, 
There's a big pause. Time freezes. You all step out of your characters for a moment. And shall we quickly go around? Uh, and keep in mind, there's seven turns going here. Let's start with Mr. Gibson. Yes. First impressions. Overall, dragging this out. We did have 18 episodes. I know there wasn't a lot to go on as far as like role play, but we did have several encounters. There was investigation. There was several combats, giant golems. There was mage fights and whatever. What do you think of second edition at a glance? Now, I understand this is a play test, and I do understand that they're supposed to revise a lot of stuff. So whatever we say now, yes, no, maybe so, could be a mute point, but maybe someone important will still watch this and take, you know, take our notes into account. Joe, what do you got for us? Uh, for basic overall game mechanics, I liked it. Okay. I, very confusing, though, because I everything's pretty much a lot different than old systems. Yeah, the last system we had you play was like 3.5. <laughs> or no, 3.0. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but it's just like any type of system that changes like from 3 to 3.5 to 4 to 5. All of D&D editions. Okay. Every time it switches, it's hard for everybody to get on to the new system because they're so used to the old system. Okay. Fair enough. Myself, I didn't do Pathfinder that much, so I don't mind this version 2. So you wouldn't mind maybe having another go in the future? Yeah. So that's one yes. Okay. Now, quickly, that's your open thoughts. Okay. Yeah. How did you find combat? Improved, better flowing, faster, or just as bogged down as the original? Just as bogged down because nobody had a fucking clue on what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, do you appreciate some of the mechanical changes? Like web is changed, no longer anchor I'm... or, you know. Uh, but th- yeah. but then on the downside, no one can make attack of opportunities. Is this an improvement? Yeah. Like overall? Th- yes. Overall, I prefer this combat mix than all the other systems. The the three oh, yes. free open three actions. And yes. unless you're bound by chevrons. So yeah. it has potential. Okay. It has very good potential. Okay. Final thoughts, Joe? I like it. Okay. Next, we have one of our probably biggest naysayers, Matt Witt. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, object- objectively, I would say this. I agree with Joe. Uh, I like the combat. I like the three turn, the three action system rather than you've got a, a swift, a movement, and an action. I like that, that you can break it up and do different things and then there are certain abilities or, or activations that take you know two chevrons or, or just one or whatever i do really like that that system for the for uh combat um i think their skills need a lot of work um overall would i pick it up and play it again i i will reserve that until they have a final release on the rule set because i think i have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of changes going forward from what we even played on yeah, there's got to be this. I, like the word on the street is everybody either. It's, everyone's either like, "Oh, it's cool," or hates it. There is not like a big love hate. It's like a yeah, we'll think about it. Or hate, you know, I don't get hates it. So combat better, faster, more bogged down. Uh much faster. I like the the limiting the attacks of opportunity thing. Um, may, maybe they should open it up to other classes, other more combat focused classes. I think um, doesn't make sense to give it to a mage, but a rogue or a ranger. I think it, it would make sense to have that be in their suite because they are combat oriented kind yeah. of class. But, um, but I, I do like the restriction on it because that really does bog down combat in uh, first edition Pathfinder. Yeah, there's a lot of movement changes, like having three actions, though you got to burn one to raise a shield, but that brings us to Messina a moment, and then just moving around and no attacks of opportunity. So you think everybody would be like running around big circles, but no one really did because there were these terrain changes. Oh, these bushes look nasty. Don't go through them. Oh, this web's in the way. And you guys kind of like skirted around. Like I didn't see a lot of different movement, even though the option was there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, final thoughts, Matt? Um, I didn't really particularly like it. Uh, and, and again, I'm going to reserve a final final as to whether I pick it up again as to when the, they have dropped a final edition for the for the rule set. Okay. Well, uh, Joe Glosto, like we're talking about Joe in combat because I know he's a tactician. For you, I think the biggest thing was skills. Yes. You had a bone pick with skills. Yeah, they, they, it's so limiting. Um, and it, it, I mean, it's tough for me because I didn't, create a character i just played a pre-gen so maybe i would be a little bit more um 
I would have. I don't think I would have picked this suite for a rogue, especially considering things like sneak attack are just so obviously broken in this. Like, mm. it's you know, like you get you get one shot with a sneak attack per combat period. You can't hide yourself back up and and sneak attack somebody else, or you're relying on somebody else's abilities to put a condition on an enemy so that you can apply your sneak attack. I think it's too limiting. You basically a rogue in second edition is basically a, a, a weak skill bunny. Okay. Ryan played our tank and a paladin and had to deal with restricted movement, heavy armor, was a bit of a buff and a healer, had to bring burn chevron movement. I shouldn't say a chevron, but like burn an action just to keep that shield up. Uh, combat? Or sorry, open sorry, open thoughts, Ryan? Uh, no, I definitely have to agree with the consensus that I, I was actually, I enjoyed the uh, three um, th three standard actions you kind of get and you kind of spend them however you want. Um, I, I, that's uh, definitely kind of, I think, simplifies it. A lot of the time we have to deal with like uh, 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 move action, standard action, free action, swift actions. But it really just kind of generalizes the action economy, makes it a lot easier for someone who is new to the whole system to jump in and consume. Um, I really like, I, I have to agree with uh, Joe on that, that, that it, the simplification of that seemed really nice. Um, and uh, for spending it and moving it in combat seemed real fine for me. I didn't find it to be a problem to uh, for the tank to uh, spend an action to raise my shield. I'm like, I'm dedicating to more defense or I can dedicate to more offense or I can dedicate to more support. That actually allowed me a lot of flexibility in that regard. Um, my biggest beef I found uh, is that they seem to really piecemeal out classes. They break out uh, iconic things uh, that really make a class a class. And if you want to do that, you have to level up and you have to pick it. You have to pick to be like a tank, paladin, to be a healer paladin, or you have to pick up, be, dedicate yourself. Kind of reminds me uh, esque to what WoW did. And they took a lot of the diversity that the game had, and then they simplified it. If you want to, oh, you want to do this, you have to go this route. And if you venture off that path, you're just kind of going to meddle and suck. Hmm. Uh, combat, you find it bogged down, or do you find it any swifter? Any, you know, because that was the big draw for second edition. They, they promised combat would go better or faster or something. Is there any uh, error for you? Uh, combat went fairly uh, fairly smoothly as for us. I'd say for the biggest thing they'd have to look at too is actually balancing uh, the pre-generated encounters. Because um, uh, for we went because we when we first started it in the shop with the golem in the uh, store, no problems. We all had a hoot. It was a fantastic time. But then as we progressed through the uh, the uh, canon material that they gave us. It just, it got from being, all right, fun and condensed to, okay, now it's a little more sluggish just because having to like beat the whole, chop the tree down, the tree didn't get more complicated, more interesting. It just got bigger around and we just had to keep chopping it at the side. More and hit points, to, more C, more abilities, more bogged down. And that's not an interesting combat maneuver. That's just a bigger hit point bar to chop through. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't change it up. It just kind of... It didn't challenge us to use our abilities any differently. It just depleted us of our resources and really didn't make us try to come at it from a different angle. They said, uh, fuck. It just became a, a numbers game. I noticed there was a lot of singles. There was like one person with some minions or a big thing with minions. Like you said, the, the, the train changed, but like you said, there wasn't a lot of change up in the fights. Now, again, this is play testing. It's early. This is why I let you guys have at it fifth level. So no one can say, oh, well, we're only first level. We have yet to progress. And you guys yeah, try to wrap it right fifth level, Then it gets fun. Yeah, well, we are fifth level, but then, you know. Uh, final thoughts? Yes, um, no, maybe so. Would you come back to this? <laughs> Maybe so. I'd have to say. Uh, uh, currently, mm, I wouldn't be inclined to come back. Uh, but given time to let them actually refine the material, heavily refine the material, and actually maybe uh, it gives something to the classes uh, back to let them feel like the classes. Again, again, I can't speak for any of the other uh, classes that were out there, but I, I know Paladin felt really kind of gutted and shallow. Okay. And you and yeah not a little overwhelmed 
Now, we lost um, Ashley Florence with the Sorceress. She had a very short cameo. So I drew on not just Jared, an intern, to like help me DM this. I brought in three more of my steadfast role mongers that had to sort of come in halfway through the story, either revamp a character they existed or pull something out of thin air and quickly put something together. And considering their performances, I don't think they did either three of these guys to have but half bad. Let's start with the next guy, I believe, that read the book thoroughly, Mr. J. Tamlin. Uh, opening thoughts for this? Um, opening thoughts overall. I mean, I had fun, but I kind of planned to. Um, I had done a fair bit of research on the on the system before coming into this, and I realized that because of the way that they had built classes, and because of the way the game system changed around, I knew going in that I would want to play this kind of character because I knew that it would have the most kind of versatility and most options. Um, but ultimately I was kind of a little disappointed in that, like, I, this has a lot to do with, because I, I was a wizard, right? So this has a lot to do with how, um, magic has been kind of changed in this system. Um, I found that a lot of the most useful spells ended up being evocation spells and I'm very much a conjuration and like old school or like, <laughs> Just like Pathfinder. I'm a wizard kind of. on a horse with a huge sword yeah, and well, a blacksmith is like, you were a wizard? Really? You're a wizard? You're telling us now? <laughs> no, no, no. What I mean is that, like, that, that's just it. Yeah. I am a wizard, but am so much more effective being a magus. Okay. Now, did I you can't... actually take five levels? Like, the other guys were five levels of fighter. Yeah. Five, you, just no, no, five you levels of wizard. There's no multi-classing as in the old sense. It's five okay. levels of wizard, and then there's, okay. like, feet you can take. All right. So, so I you... took the... Sorry, how, so how'd you find moving us along? How'd you find the combat? Like, did, did they promise with the action economy? Like, did you find it move things or just more bogged down because it's different? Um, there were some things, there were a lot of things that I found that could have been bogged down, but they'd cut out. Like, um, when we first started, moving, switching hands with a sword was a full action. So, for example, if I wanted to cast a spell that required a free hand, I had to drop, I had to let go of my sword, cast my spell, then spend another action to grab on again. Uh, eventually, they cut that down. So it's, uh, you don't actually, as a wizard, you don't actually have to let go of your weapon to cast somatic spells. Mm. Very helpful. Um, yeah, but um, I feel like there's, okay, one of my biggest things is uh, with 5th Ed, they have a thing called bo uh, bonus action, which is kind of like your reaction, but it can be used during your turn if you have a certain thing that gives you it, or it can be used as like an attack of opportunity kind of equivalent thing. Um, I feel like switching the name from reaction to something like free action, like they had for like they had in Pathfinder, would allow them to move more things that now technically require an action, but clearly shouldn't, to actually being able to like just do that one thing for free. Like for example, holding your shield up. I don't think that that should like slow you down so much in your turn that you're spending a full action, especially with like just getting to opponent or just getting to enemies nowadays because the game is so mo uh, so mobile just getting to enemies takes like two actions at least in at times so two actions move up then hold shield done Did where was the point in that whereas everyone else is at least getting their attack in mm. and then the shield can easily be broken and then that whole mechanic isn't kind of okay. oddly balanced final thoughts would you have another go at this do you think there's hope here um I am looking forward to seeing what they do with the changes. Just uh, also because, like, I'm so invested in the Pathfinder world and the story going into it. I really hope that I can get invested in the system. So I'm gonna give it my best try. Hmm. Uh, moving down the list, um, no notable caster, manipulator of powers, and usually being very upset as soon as you smack him, and then he just unleashes the terribleness of all of his magic. Mr. Aiden Willems has played several casters under me and the Jedi. Uh, opening thoughts, Aiden? I know you kind of, uh, again, came halfway in with this, but... Yeah, opening thoughts, I like a lot of what they did for kind of streamlining from 1.0 to 2.0. Um, like everybody else, the three actions that you can kind of just designate for whatever you want, I really liked. Um, I'm not a big fan of how they have like, uh, like class specific feats that you have to go down. And from that, like you branch off and kind of build what you want. Cause I went sorcerer and, um, like one of the like feet trees you can go down is like getting an art, uh, is like getting a familiar 
or um, focus on different stuff. Um, so I, I wasn't a big fan of that. Something they did make really interesting is based off of the bloodline that you choose gives you access to the different um, like types of spells. So if you go dragon, you get arcane. If you go fey, you get primal. Um, angelic, you get divine. Demonic, you get also divine. So you're saying um, like the old bloodline was like, oh, here's your bloodline, here's your onesie, where this it shapes your magic into the future. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's cool. That's so cool. It, it, it's there's good toss-ups and bad toss-ups. Um, it They also gave sorcerers um, the same progression on spell levels as wizards from uh, 1.0 which I really appreciate because I always felt like sorcerers were kind of nerfed in that aspect um, in 1.0 um, but at the same time now they just kind of have more of a, of a wizardy feel because um, some of the feats that you can take are like counter spell like, uh, and like a lot of like meta, uh, meta magic uh, feats from the first one like reach, widen yeah, um, yeah, and whatnot. So, so that, br that brings us to like combat. Um, now you instead of we're talking about the action economy and then the, we talked about movement. We talked about hacking away. How do you find combat affecting being a spellcaster? Yay, nay. Does the economy action work from your point as a spellcaster? Because that's a completely different thing in first edition. Spellcasters had to act differently in combat. They had to move differently in combat. Are you seeing improvements in this system or no? Um, yeah, I mean, it, there isn't too much difference because in 1.0, it was move, cast a spell. In here, it's you get one chevron to move. Most spells are two chevrons. Some of them are three. So it it doesn't feel too different, um, except for the fact that, like, sometimes you can't cast your spell when you want to because you have to double move to get to someone because they double move and then attack. Um, so everybody else having more mobility um, is kind of annoying when most of your spells, at least at low level, have 30-foot range. And you can maybe extend it 5, 10 feet based off certain feats, but... Yeah, Which, if I can add, is why I ended up summoning a horse in, like, first round. Yeah, yeah. I dug into Aiden for those caster questions because your guy had magic, but he kind of went about the moves like the warriors. And I didn't until I got to the like this fresh sorcerer, like I have my robes and my wiggly fingers, is directing those questions at Aiden. Um, yeah. There's getting to the combat, and you're talking about being a sorcerer and like running around and everything. Um, your final thoughts on the game? Like, was there anything you wanted to add that you haven't already heard from the other guys? Or, like, would you have another go at this? Is there potential here? Or are you just waiting for the revamp and then, you know? The, there's definitely potential, um, but I want to wait on the actual release. I want to read through, like, the entire rule book and whatnot and see what they change from the playtest. Because right now, I would not play it again. Okay. But I know they're going to change a great deal. Um, and, yeah, like, skills are really weird, and I don't like how it's been handled um but i do like some of the changes they've made to um i mean for instance dragon claws it's very it's very different the power in 2.0 than 1.0 um, okay so it's so we've got a yes. Yeah, actually we have two yeses two meh and a solid no uh, myself and jared are invested in the idea of something new for me for for a podcast for him to actually build an alternate pathfinder world but use the system to prove on it brings us around to Frank Hamilton, who took an existing character. Now, you haven't seen this existing character. This character won him the audition in 2015. Um, and we're having the man from Assyrian launch very soon who's going to be playing this character, Old Man Arif, who starts as a scholar and ends up being a cloister cleric of Phrasma, maybe, if he can live. I specifically asked him for that role here and so that he could convert a character. We have guys that played Iconics. We had guys that went, ooh, I will take a brand new thing and look at a brand new class. Maybe I'll try the new Paladin. Maybe I'll try the new Mage. We asked him to play the Cleric. We asked him to play his Cleric. And then we asked him to convert his first edition Cleric, Pathfinder, which unfortunately I haven't seen, to second edition. So let's start with Frank. Open thoughts? Um, well, you know, as far as converting... Uh, first edition into a second edition character that's really difficult um, there's a lot of the flavor that just because first edition is a much more established game a lot of that flavor doesn't carry forward into this playtest version 
Um, one thing I did like is the uh, skill reallocation, you know, kind of the training part of the downtime rules in the advanced book um, first edition. That's been incorporated into the base game for Pathfinder 2. So if, say, for example, your wizard needs more time to think, quote unquote, about something, he can actually take a week. He can reallocate feats. He can reallocate some skills to more closely align what the the goal of the adventure is. So it's easier to be a little more fluid, especially with skill monkeys. But it's almost impossible to hit that high note that you could with a first edition character. Those just specializations to a fine degree you just can't do in this cool uh action economy now you're a cleric so you're a caster so i'm assuming you have the same beef unless you found something as a cleric um something i forgot to ask aiden which i'll ask both of you was it came down to a spell description mage armor in this is much nerfed compared to something like web where we found we could cast it flat instead of needing that anchor so skipping over a thousand spells that we haven't been exposed to uh, but how they work as a caster. He talked about the nerfed range, the 30-foot thing, and the movement. Mm -hmm. I saw that you you got stuck by that. And we could go spell by spell by spell going, well, this spell's better, that spell's better, or not. And that really what makes you as a caster. But skipping that, the action economy, like the combat itself, did you find it better, faster, slower? Um, I, I, you know, I always a, a cleric's primary role is a backup character. You know, they're always kind of never quite in the forefront. They're always healers. Well, typically they're always healers. Um, I, I felt that this game really supported that. There are some very good one Chevron healing powers that you can spend, which means a cleric can keep up with the fast characters by spending two points of movement and then dumping a one Chevron healing power. I mean, that works out fine. I mean, your your clerics tend to be, uh, in, in my opinion, more mobile in second edition less kind of foot nailed to the ground kind of a thing. Um, I, I think in this way that Pathfinder 2 really supports the uh, the cleric. Cool. Uh, final thoughts, possibly like yes and no for what the guys have said or your own thoughts on something that we haven't touched on yet? Um, well, well, for me, it's, it's always making a character my own thing. Um, so I'm, I'm not crazy about the limitations set upon character generation. You know, you're limited to X stat or you have to build and develop into what I would consider ra uh, base racial abilities. I don't like that out of the gate, but that's just because I hate those kinds of limitations on a starting character because they're arbitrary. There shouldn't be any reason why my, you know, crazy intelligent elf wizard shouldn't have a 21 intelligence. I mean, you know, just if that's the direction you want to go, you want to put all your your eggs in one basket, so to speak. You shouldn't have some arbitrary limitation to kind of set that cap for you. That's the pro argument about min maxing versus you could still say it's for flavor as opposed to yeah. yeah. So would you give this another go? Uh, you you, um, you you already stated that like for, you know to like convert a character, which kind of was kind of suckish. But like if you had a fresh go, like at the system, did you enjoy playing the system? Would you have another go at this? I, I think the spirit of the game is to make combat faster. I don't know how that's going to enhance any kind of role-playing interaction between players, DMs, NPCs. I don't, I don't know if that's encouraged through the system because I didn't really do a bit of it, to be honest with you. I was kind of reading in the background while I was being quiet. Um, but starting a character from first level and moving up through a published adventure or some homebrew, I, I think the game could probably stand on its own as long as I wasn't continually comparing it to first edition. As long as I didn't do that, I think it's a solid, you know, it's got a, got some good legs to stand on. But if you keep reflecting back, oh, this is not how first edition does it, it's never going to shine like first edition does, especially not to me. I was there for the second edition becoming third, a major change. When they polished it to 3.5, not much, but the second to third where you kept referring in your head, it was so hard to get out. And even when I learned Pathfinder, it was so hard to get 3.5 out of my head. Um, I think what your, your statement there is valid, but it's going to be very hard for, for anyone not to just kind of default. You know, you, it's almost like you got to put the old game down and be exactly. completely invested in this now speaking of completely invested before we uh, ring jared's bell uh final thoughts frank 
Um, I think starting at first level, um, it's probably a, a, a great game, just like Pathfinder. I mean, all versions of Pathfinder I love. I love the world. I love the characters. I love the history. I mean, I'd be willing to try it again if I didn't have so much on my plate. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, my own thoughts, to be honest, I saw Starfinder come out. I'm like, guys, we got to pot this. We got to try it. And we had mixed feelings. There was only so much to do. And there was a lot of system changes. And for us, again, when you're playing for your own entertainment, you got to just play with what you like to play. You got to enjoy the game as well as the concept of the game. And for us now that we're playing so much material, so many shows, to keep adding systems and games, it I think it's taking away from us just enjoying ourselves. So I, I don't think I can constructively say... You know, I like this, I didn't like this, I was going to like Starfinder, I didn't like Starfinder. I would have to sort of put everything I'm doing down. And that's Star Wars Saga Edition that we're still mired in because we liked it more than FFG. Several Pathfinder games that I'm DMing. Second Edition itself, or give a thing, and I, I do a home game with my wife of D20 Modern, which is based on like 3.5. It's too much going on in my head for me to honestly give you guys an objective answer. Do I enjoy DMing? I love it. Do I enjoy playing? Did I see the hit notes of like sticking a silly voice on an NPC? Sure. Did I like how the adventure was written? Because this is the only thing a GM can really tell you. It's like, well, how, how did they lay it out? You know, did they lay it out? Did you write it? We talked quickly about the three tiers of this stage, then the bad guy does that, that stage, and the guy bad guy does that. Ryan talked about, well, we kept chopping down bigger trees. You're going to have to play this game for a while. You're going to have to play several adventures, or you're going to have to like come up with homebrew that suits you. But you got to be excited about the game. I love d and I love the fantasy concept. So I think I could get excited about it. I just, like like Frank said, I agree. If I don't have so much on my plate, you'd have to literally like wipe slate clean and look at it from a player's point of view. So I think I'd like to play this. If, so, if someone dropped a DM in my lap or something, I wouldn't mind playing it. I don't think I'd like to try and like read the book front to back and DM it like I kind of half-assed did with this one, one play off. Jared, your first big your first big show, you know, we've had you in the background of Star Wars, we've had you a while. Jared Mercer is a fan who reached out to us and said, I listened to your first five episodes of Attack of Opportunity, and it reminded me of the old days, and could you teach me, could you give me your thoughts? And I said, oh, I'm so sorry, our audio was bad. We did a, a living room game, which we're not used to that audio setup. We're used to virtual. But he, he just kept texting me and saying, like, no, I want to know, I want to learn. So I explained, we're not professionals, we're amateurs, we're learning, we're having fun while we learn. And that's what drew him to us, is the fact he could hear us having the fun. So as a joke, I'm like, right, you're in. We're just going to shove you in here. You're our intern. That's the joke. Here you are. And he sat in so many games and we've had so many emails and I forward them to the guys so that these guys can see my teaching. And the other guys have put in some uh, objective comments with Jared back and forth. He's, you know, kind of become one of us. We're propping Jared up for his own stuff, which I'm actually not going to ask him about now because I think Jared Mercer deserves gentlemen his own round of applause and his own attack of opportunity interview which you'll be able to see on attack of opportunity where we can delve into his writing his homebrew creation the reason he's here and a lot more about jared and because i'm a schmuck and we're out of time so we'll just end it there so good night everybody we have several yays several nays a couple on the fence uh which i think is fair honestly i do because when they say here's a beta and we're gonna fix it and you're messed with the broken pieces and you're kind of fixing it for them, right? And then they make the final decision. You got to wait to see how it goes and grows. So gentlemen, thank you for playing. You, thank you so much for listening. This is probably going to get buried in our Attack of Opportunity. There are Attack of Opportunity one shots, there are Attack of Opportunity interviews, but we have two seasons going of Star Wars running the canon Dawn of Defiance campaign, which we absolutely love because Star Wars never dies, especially the old school stuff. We have Pathfinder's War for the Crown finally digging into its Crownfall first book, first season, and we're having a blast doing that. We've got girls, we've got guys, we've got content creators. We're digging deep into friends, and foes, and fans of the podcast that are coming in, helping us doing cameos, doing voiceovers. We are going to play some Pathfinder Society Adventure and link them, find the special ones that bring up, and dare I say, because it's this podcast, Doomsday Dawn was the official second edition playtest, and they cut two adventures out. 
There's a small paragraph that talks about the hollow and Buddy going in there and adventures looking after it. And those adventures are in tune with the Pharaohs and the Stone Pack Pyramid. And they were written for 3.5 before Galorian actually got off the ground. And you might see us delving into those. Not in second edition. First edition is the closest thing we're going to get to it's written. But that story will be revealed. It'll fill in that gap of the Doomsday Dawn storyline and beyond and right in from 4707 all the way up to 4715 with Master Arif, the scholar slash cleric, being our focal point. And we really hope you enjoy the style of this new show. And of course, our evil show is coming. I mean, it's evil. You, how can you not love that? So thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Follow us on Twitter. Please, please, please tell your friends about us. And if you have the time and the dime, Patreon desperately needs your support. Thank you so much. And good night, everybody.